All right, guys, I just finished my drive in the Ford Mach-E. I'm still sitting in it. I wanted to give you my first impressions, but I also wanted to mention again that I was not paid in any way by Ford or anyone else to make this video. They did give me early access to it, but my opinions are my own. They have absolutely zero editorial input or anything else about this video that you're gonna see here. So without further ado, let's hop in and go for a drive in the Ford Mach-E. First off, I think it looks really good. Again, something that whether or not you like it, it, it styling is a big factor when it comes to people's decision making. So I'm a fan. Um, I'm not a big Mustang guy, so if I was, I might be offended by this, I understand that. But as just someone that likes really practical, functional cars, I think they've done a great job here. On top of that, I think Ford has really embraced electric vehicles. I think that was something that I and a lot of EV fans were kind of worried about, is that this would be kind of a half-hearted attempt. But I can tell you after spending a few hours with it that this thing is legit. This is a very solid EV. Um, and we'll get into why here in a second. But overall, I am really happy with this vehicle. Now, the one I got to drive here was the extended range. It's a four-wheel drive. And I took it on a road trip here that lasted about two hours. I probably spent 50 or 60 miles only. I'm looking at 190 miles range now, and I started with about 244. And I felt like I drove all day. Like it, the range has actually really held up throughout this whole time. Um, so let's just go through the car now and just talk about all the different features and the things that really stood out to me. Okay, first up is the interior. I've said it before that this is one of my favorite interiors after driving in it for a couple hours now, I would say it's probably my favorite interior of any car I've been in. And, and part of that is because they've kind of taken the best of what Tesla was doing and modified it and enhanced it, right? You can kind of take what they've done that has worked and hasn't worked and kind of uh, upgrade that a little bit. And I think that's what they've done here. They have this center screen, which is really big and really clear all of the graphics and everything in the center screen are fresh this whole thing is a brand new platform from ford it's all built in html5 which if you're a nerd like me which just means that it can be upgraded and changed they do have over there updates on the top part is where you have your kind of main screen i leave it on navigation but you can click on these tiles below that to switch it out with like the phone or you know your radio or whatever then down below that you have your row of climate controls with this really cool knob in the middle. The knob is nice. I will tell you, it's actually convenient just to not have to be thinking about it where you're tapping and just look down and turn a knob and it, and it does its job. Now right now it's set to volume only for music or whatever audio is playing and that can be changed. That's something that because it is software driven, they could change that to climate controls or something else. So I like the flexibility of this brand new platform. The apps that are built in are basically just the navigation, Sirius XM, AM and FM radio, but it does have integration with your phone. So you're still gonna want your Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay. Really well done. I love, love the interior space here, the screen in the middle. Then you have the screen behind the dashboard and here you have your basic stuff, right? Your, your range that's left, whether or not you're in drive or whatever. While you're driving, you have your speed and then you have your turn by turn directions. Again, really cool, just the information you need. And it's a really small screen. It's about the size of a normal rear view mirror if you're wondering how big that is in relation to maybe some of the other screens you've seen. And with that also is where you have your driver assist functionality. So the lane keep and the adaptive cruise control, which are all controlled from the steering wheel here on the left, with the exception of some of the settings you can get to in the main screen there. In my testing of the adaptive cruise control, the lane keep, it worked really well. Uh, I was doing it on surface streets, being very cautious. It was going through intersections. It was doing its job. I wouldn't say it was perfect, this is a pre-production car, so it's 99.99% .99 done, 
but software like that is gonna continue to improve because they've adopted that same model that Tesla has. So, well done overall. Now, just below that main uh, binnacle dash, the dashboard right behind the wheel, you have a, a little bar here that is meant for truly hands-off driving, which will be monitoring your attentiveness, your eyes looking forward and all of that. So that's what that is. That's not enabled right now. They said that will be a software update that is to come. The buttons and everything are you know, a lot more than you would see in one of the more minimalist designs like Tesla has with the Model 3 and Model Y. But I would say if you're coming from a regular gas car or a modern, even a Model S or Model X, it's going to feel pretty standard. It's not overly done with a gazillion buttons like the Porsche Taycan had, but it is, uh, you know, it, it is functional. You've got volume, you've got your cruise control stuff. Well done, I would say, overall on kind of the layout and, and just, just the feel. It feels really advanced, but nice. Not overly done, not ornate or anything kind of crazy like that, but also not minimalistic to where you're gonna scare off a lot of consumers. The seats are all power adjusted and very comfortable, I would say. Um, you know, heated, all that kind of stuff, your typical situation. So not anything overly special or, or different about the seats that I felt, but they were very comfortable on my two plus hour drive that I just went on. The back seat is actually really spacious, which is cool because in a crossover SUV, the, the fastbacks, I think they're called, the roof usually slopes really close back and it makes it really crunched. And so someone like myself who gets really car sick and nauseous, funny job to have, I know it, it's really bad, but in this one, it's actually a really spacious back because first off you have the glass, the all glass roof, which is up higher. That is an option, it's not standard. And then you also have the way that they've done the styling, the 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 rim of it or the edge, you it looks like the fastback, but there's this black bar that actually kind of extends and goes straight. And because it's black, it's kind of an optical illusion. You don't really see it, but that provides a couple inches there, make it a totally different experience when you're sitting in the back of this vehicle. Now it is a functional vehicle. This is a crossover SUV, a crossover utility vehicle. Again, I know that upsets some Mustang owners but, or Mustang fans, but with that, you have the hatchback, the trunk, and it's pretty good. I'm impressed with it. The It opens really wide. It has a little privacy screen that's really lightweight and flexible, so you can take it off and store it down below. It does have a false bottom to kind of make it level with the edge there. And then when you put the seats all the way down, that makes it so you can slide things on in and out of it really easy. Also, if you wanted to camp in it, totally an option. You can see that I fit perfectly inside of it. So clearly this is designed with utility in mind. Another storage area that has been kind of thoughtfully designed, it seems, is really cool, is the frunk. And the thing about the frunk here that's really unique is it has a drain. So all the plastic, all the compartments in the frunk are made to be washed. You can just literally hit them with the hose and there's a drain in there. Also, you could easily fit a six pack and all that. So really thinking about tailgating in this is kind of the idea. So with that, what you have is a very functional, uniquely designed frunk that is made for a specific purpose. The other idea would be, you know, this company's uh, from Michigan, so snow, boots, those kind of things. If you're out and you get, you know, muddy or whatever, you can throw stuff in there and then just rinse it off. Imagine, you know, out here in California, your surfboard, you want to throw your wetsuit somewhere and it's going to drain, you're going to have sand all over. The frunk is designed with function in mind, not just being a, a you know, hermetically sealed box. And so I appreciate that. I, I think maybe they could add a charging port in there or something like that to make it even more functional. But the frunk is pretty cool, I thought. All right, so that's my overall impressions after driving it for a few hours here. Now let's talk about the specs, starting with range. Now, the EPA estimate for this car is 300 miles. The one I drove here was right around 245, and it varies. But I can say that after having a Model X P90D for a couple years and only getting about 200 miles on a daily charge, it's gonna be fine. I think really about 250 is, is, is the ideal mark. Now, if you wanna go on road trips and you do that regularly, yeah, you're gonna want something with a lot more range, but for the vast majority of people out there, this is gonna, this is gonna suit your needs. I mean, literally almost everybody, 240, 250 plus miles, you're good to go. Now, with that 300 miles of range, you get a, a price starting at $42,895. And that's before the federal tax credit. So when you take into account the federal tax credit in the US, many states also have other incentives. Um, you're looking at about $35,395 for this vehicle, which 
is incredible. I can tell you right now that this is, they're gonna sell a lot of these because it is definitely a, a, a high-end product. This is, it feels like a luxury vehicle, even though I know that's not what Ford really goes for. They have uh, other brands that, that check that box. But to me, this feels like a very modern, a very advanced, high-tech car that a lot of people are gonna love. And when you're looking at 42, almost 43,000 before the incentive, and then in California and some other states are doing this thing where you can actually apply that rebate at the time of purchase, meaning you don't have to like file taxes and refinance your loan or something a year later, you get it at the time of purchase. $35,000, this is a fantastic, fantastic car for that. So really impressed with the price. So you got range, you got price, performance slash utility. Performance, we're looking at zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. I didn't see that in this experience, but I can say that compared to any other gas car, this is gonna blow the doors off of it. Compared to say a P100D Model S, no, this doesn't stand a chance, but this is a, a crossover SUV. And so in terms of performance, I think the average person out there is really gonna like this car. And if you do want that super quick zero to 60, you can get the GT option. Of course, it'll run you, run you a bit more money, but still impressive specs all around. And as I mentioned, in terms of utility, that it's super functional, right? You have a huge hatchback, tons of storage back there. Plus you also have this frunk, which again, I think is probably the coolest frunk of any electric car that I've seen. And so the next category is the tech. And I mentioned it already, but I am thoroughly impressed here. Now, I always look at this as like, Tesla is a company that's a tech company trying to make cars. So some of the typical car stuff doesn't work as well, but the tech is always fantastic. Here it's on the flip side. Ford has been making cars as long as this country has been making cars. And since then, they are trying to become a tech company. And that is where I really think they're succeeding. I think that it's something that I'm impressed with. You can tell it's fresh and clean. Super impressed with that. Also, the, the two screens work really well together, right? If you remember the, the Taycan, that was one of the knocks I had against it was there were four different screens. It didn't make sense why some did some things and some did other things. That car was incredible in other ways, but the tech didn't impress me. Here, this is as close to a Tesla as I've ever been in. I need some more time with it, I would say, to have a, a better judgment on that. But I would say if you haven't had a Tesla or some crazy advanced car like that, coming here, you are gonna be thoroughly blown away by how good the tech is inside of this car. All right, and our last category, styling. As always, the most subjective of them all. I'm a fan. I think it looks good. I think for a crossover SUV, it it has some unique characters to it. It still screams Ford. It still screams Mustang. Probably if you're a Mustang guy and you just want that sport coupe, yeah, this isn't your car. But maybe you've had one in the past, and you know you got a family now. You need a car that's a bit more functional than that two door. This is really going to check all those boxes. It feels stylish. It feels aggressive. It feels like a Mustang. Um, in, in its looks and everything else. And there's a lot of really cool, unique little things that they did, like the front uh, flaps that open, and, and like I, I mentioned, that black trim piece giving it, you know, it's sort of an optical illusion. Uh, really impressed with the styling, but you know, to each their own. So overall, I think Ford has an absolute winner on their hands here. I think if you're in the market for an electric vehicle and this is in your price point, maybe you like Ford, you've had them in the past, you like the reliability of having a dealer network, whatever, definitely one to check out. Uh, they're coming out soon, early 2021, and you know they'll have different versions coming out within a year's time frame. You know these will be pretty reg regularly available. So if you're in the market for one, go check it out. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And as always, don't forget when you free the data, you're mind to follow. I'll see you guys back in the next one.